Hi everybody, it's Heidi here. Okay, so I am doing a brick stitch on a wire ring. Okay, so this is a metal ring. I got these at the shop. I don't know whether we've still got them in stock. They are two inches in diameter and five centimeters diameter. Um, so if you do need to ring the girls, they are like a big jump ring because they do have like a little uh, split in them. But we did have them in stock, so possibly still in there. Obviously, it won't be online, so you do need to hit ring the shop if you need to get some. Um, tell Caroline or Donna, whoever answers, they are two inches wide and or five centimetres wide. Um, this is the, the piece that we're going to, well, I'm going to show you. Oops, cat hairs. Oops, sorry. Okay, and it's using, um, I think they are... I'm pretty sure these are 8mm beads. Let me just check the pearls that are on it. Let me see. Oh, they might be 6mm actually. I think they're 6mm. So 6mm pearls, 4mm um, the smaller pearls, and the bicones are a. Oh. I want to say four millimetre, but I'm not sure. So they are bicones. Um, pearls are available on the online. Um, so you can get those online. And I think you can get the bicones as well, but if not, ring the shop. Okay. So this technique, the reason I'm doing this technique is because brick stitch is a really handy stitch to have for one. It not only can be done on a metal ring, but you can also actually do, for instance, my little pearl here. You can actually do a brick stitch around a bead, which I'll show you quickly how you can do that right at the very end. Um, but this is the way that I do my dream catchers. So anybody that was watching and we said we were going to create a Zoom class for my beaded dream catchers. This is an unfinished one. So this is a beaded dream catcher without all the little dangles on it. And this step around the edge is brick stitch, okay? And obviously with this, I do it with um, size 11 and eight seed beads, okay? However, it's really fiddly. So I thought just to show you the brick stitch, I'm gonna show you with slightly bigger beads, okay? Donna's putting up some products there, so that's great. Hopefully it's stuff to do with this. <laughs> um, I can't see what it is that she's put, oh, pearls. I can see pearls brilliant pearls are online um so yes this is what creates this edge around the dream catcher so it's just literally the only difference is that i'm using larger beads so you can see how to do it okay so let's turn the camera down and get started yeah, I keep sniffing i've run out of my prescription which has my antihistamines in it <laughs> So I haven't got any, so I keep sniffing. I haven't got a cold and I haven't got COVID. Okay, let's hope you can see that. So I've got my beads ooh, there on my mat and my ring. Now I've taken already, I've taken a length of, um, I'm using KO thread, but you can use uh, Nymo as well. It's absolutely fine. I just prefer KO personally. Um, make sure you do stretch it out before you start using it. So either stretch it from the roll or once you've taken your length, stretch it out, bounce it a bit like, whoops, like so, um, to stretch it out so that it doesn't stretch whilst you're creating this because otherwise it can make it really loose and make you have loads of gaps. So the first thing I do is I take the end, you probably can't even see that, I've got the end of the thread there, and it doesn't matter where on your metal ring, you're just gonna bring it through and tie two knots onto the, oops a daisy, onto the ring, okay? Leave the knot on the outer side, so then it will get hidden by a bead. And if, make sure you leave your tail long enough so that when you finish doing this part, you can put your needle on your tail and hide it by bringing it up into your beads. Okay, so, as I said, I'm using bigger beads so you can see what I am doing. So, the first thing I'm doing is I'm picking up a pearl, push it down my thread. Now, 
I want to try and get this as close to the camera as I can. So you can see my pearl there if I hold it with my finger. So what I want to do is take my needle underneath, so through the ring, and hold my pearl there. Oops, a daisy. So my thread has gone under and up through, and then I'm going back through where the thread is coming out and it creates so it creates a little I don't know whether you can see that it creates a loop to anchor it and then your bead will sit with a line of thread down that side I don't know if I position it like that so there's a line of thread down one side your hole will be positioned at the top of the bottom and the bottom of your ring so your hole is sticking up up top and your thread will be exiting out of the top okay and what this does it creates a, a little bridge between each bead and that's how you build it up by using those bridges between each bead to build up the next layer so again once I've done that I'm going to pick up another pearl pull my thread over and then up through the loop and pass it back up through where the per the threads just come from and you can see if I pull it nice and tight you can see that I've got this little bridge I don't know can you see that a little bridge up top okay and then you just continue on by adding your pearls, bringing your thread up through the centre of your, your ring, whoops, and then going back up the same hole you've just come out of, whoops a daisy, and it creates that nice little loop, and if you don't keep hold of it nice and tightly, it will, it will sort of loosen up and, and go all baggy and stuff. But each time you add a pearl, just, just pull it nice and tight again and straighten your beads up because they can go a bit lopsided. Okay. So you want to continue this. Whoops, a daisy. Right the way around your bead. Now, I was kind of thinking about this earlier and anticipating what sort of questions could be asked and I was thinking about what sorts of beads you can do this with. So any round bead, definitely. You can do it with cubes, you can do it with rondelles, although the rondelles typically have a flatter top but slightly rounder you know, sort of wider sides. Um, and what you'll find is you'll see more of the thread because there's more of a gap between them when they sit next to each other. So if you're not bothered by that gap, you can do it with crystal rondelles as well or a rondelle shape in a bead. So that's kind of like a bit like the pumpkin shape sort of thing. Um, bicones work really nicely, but you do have to kind of maneuver them a little bit because they have a tendency which is what happened on my pendant so if I put that down for just a second on the pendant I did uh, bicone beads and you can see sometimes they go a bit sideways because of the shape of them so you can make them sit more upright by maneuvering them as you go along um, but it does look quite nice it looks like they're sort of like pointing together so you can get slightly different shapes out of that. But if you were putting, it's because they've got a gap in between them. If you were doing this and putting them all the way around, they would bust up against each other and stand more upright when you position them. So um, as I say, those beads would look lovely. Um, I think basically it's got to be, they've got to have a hole obviously going right the way through, but obviously through the middle and both sides on the, of the hole need to be the same shape so if you had a uh, like for instance I was thinking of things like pit beads 
um, and things like that they have a hole that goes from one side to the other on the bottom of the bead but the top is is different so things like that wouldn't work the same um, but you can definitely do this with bicones cubes um, cubes look particularly nice actually uh, square beads um, Oops, a daisy. And you can do it as small or as large as you want. Um, you can go like bigger. You can go bigger than this size, which is the six mil. Um, you can go smaller. So we, I've done it before. You can do it obviously with delica beads, and it looks absolutely stunning with delica beads because because they are such a rigorous sizing. Um, every one is exactly the same, so they do sit. Um, absolutely if you want it to look absolutely perfect and you're a perfectionist then definitely use tealer beads uh, sorry not tealer beads um delica beads what am i thinking of tealers for um delica beads are beautiful but you know if you want to go small we do have a small selection of size 15s but you know the 11s and 8s which i use for my my standard dream catchers are absolutely perfect and obviously on a dream catcher you would complete this brick stitch around the outside of the the wire um, and then once finished that that's when I would go to the inside and do like the spider's web or it's supposed to look a bit like a lotus flower the the center part um, but reminiscent of a spider's web um, you would go back in and do that and again you know that can be done with different size beads if you wish um but we will be we have had discussions about our dream catcher and we will be i am going to be doing a a zoom class at some point it's a bit scary having never done one before and not being of this generation of computer geeks I'm a little bit worried about doing it, but Donna's reassured me that you guys that that, that do the, the Zooms are very kind and you were fantastic when she did her initial Zoom class and were very, very patient and kind with her. So I'm hoping I get the same. <laughs> I'm hoping I get the same. I'm just trying to look and see if there's any comments. <laughs> I'm hoping you're going to be kind with me, guys. You could be saying anything on there at the moment. I can't actually see because um, my iPad has to be facing so far down that unless I stick my head right in front of the camera, <laughs> I can't read what you're saying. That's why Donna goes on and answers your comments. I can only see it when I put the camera facing me. So use this opportunity to, to say anything about me because I can't see it. <laughs> and to be fair, I'm a bit like... Um, Johnny Depp. I don't watch him back. I can't stand seeing myself on on the screen. It it freaks me out big style. So I don't tend to watch him back. I do go on and if I've made a boo-boo anywhere, I go on to see if it's noticeable. Um, and I do go back and obviously read everybody's comments. I, I do like doing that because it's nice to see who's caught up with you online whilst you couldn't see. Um, but yeah, I don't like watching them back. It's scary. So yes, we we are in discussions about a date for doing the dream catcher. And you are very, very lucky, guys, because I said years back when I first started making them that I'd never, never teach a class on it because it was my design. And I haven't seen them anywhere else like this. So, but no, you're, you're going to, I'm going to gift it to you my design just make sure if you're gonna make it you're gonna tell people my name <laughs> i'm joking i'm not that big headed okay so you can see here i have got all my beads on and all i did on my last bead let me just reverse that so you can see so all i did on my last bead it came my little bridge was coming out and i went down the first bead i'd added and if you want to tie this off and add some new thread, which I probably should do, on one of the little, I'm just going to pass it through, up and down, through another couple of beads just to make sure it's nice and secure. 
okay and then take advantage of the little thread that sits around the ring and I'm going to pop my needle underneath it and I do a surgeon's knot so I, I pass my needle round and through and round and through so it's oops it's like a doubled knot oh if I get my needle through that's it pull it up and then pop your needle back out through that same bead and your knot will go up oops Daisy and that's pulled my thread up as well so I'm gonna go back down again that's it okay so your knots hidden so I'm just gonna snip off and then I shall show you not only how to add whoops more thread now I'm not gonna stitch this through because I'm gonna strip take it off so you don't get confused with all the threads that are going on on here so for the next row I've got the slightly smaller pearls and these are um, a four millimeter and be be conscious of the fact that the smaller you go so each time you go down smaller you're going to need particularly more of that bead because it's going to take more of those beads to take up the space so actually on top of one pearl you may actually need like two or even three smaller pearls to bridge that gap okay so to add extra thread on take your needle through one of the little the little um I don't know if you can see that one of the little threads through that are on your ring where we added our original pearls and all I do is pull it to now you can leave leave another long thread if you want to so that you can stitch it back in I'm not going to worry too much because I don't want you to have to see so many threads dangling off and wondering what each one is so but when you're doing it leave your thread a little bit longer so that Oops, you can stitch it back in. So all I'm going to do now is just pass up the bead that's directly above, oops, directly above my knot. And that will pull my knot inside my bead. So then what we're going to do now is pick up, and you do them individually, you don't do two or three at a time. So this time you've got this bridge in between your pearls and my needle's going to go under that instead of, so in place of the, the metal ring, that little bridge in between each pearl is like our metal ring that we need to go under and then back up through our bead, the same as we did with the first lot. So again, pick up a pearl, put your needle under that little bridge, pull it to, and then put your needle back up through your whoops you'll be the same way that you exited okay and again you do this all the way around now you don't have to um you don't have to do the beads all the way around if i show you with this one you can leave gaps and make patterns so if i do three beads and i just want to stop it there i will just my last thread will go back down through my larger pearl and you'll have um, a little thread at either side of your pearls so one at the beginning and one at the end and then if you want to start an another group go back up through the next pearl and we can add a little group of three again and this is how you can create your little patterns around the edge of your ring so you know you can create all sorts of little patterns I actually did have brainwave last night and think I could actually do a virus one which I might still do actually because I think it's quite funny I might like to wear a virus one around my neck I'm not being nasty to anybody that has got the virus or somebody who's lost somebody from the virus I just think it would be a quirky little thing to have okay so you've got three three pearls and you've got a stitch down the first one starting it there stitch down the other one and then you've got your little bridges on that inside bit okay now if I wanted to go back 
So if I imagine I've gone right the way around, I can create a little pattern. So I can go back up through my black pearl and add another couple of pearls on top. Each one done individually again. And then go back down through my last pearl. And then I can pass back up through my first one. So it's really quite versatile. Um, and then maybe I'll go back up through that pearl and pop another one on the top. So you can create a little triangle with, with your pearls. And as I say, the, the beginning and end pearl will have a little um, tiny piece of, of thread down the side of it. Now, obviously, I'm using blue. But if I was using, which I should have done, I should have used a black thread. So you can see the little diamond shape. And it's quite nice because you've got lots of ways to go back down, bring it around and go back up again. So, you, you know, it's not... You don't have to go right the way back down your large pearl. You can just come down to the bottom here. You can zoom across and come back up through the one on the other side. Um, and your thread gets hidden within there. So you can do little triangles. You could do, I could come back and I could put some little bicones on, on this other one. So you can make lots of little groups. Now, one of the things I do do on the, um, the Dreamcatcher one is I create a little loop on it so if you can see there I come out of one of the seed beads and then I add it's usually about nine or eleven little seed beads and then go back down through not the next one but the next one after it so I leave a gap of of one in the middle and then go down the next seed bead to create a little loop and you can make these as long or as short as you want um, but I always make sure to leave a space so that I can put my little loop in, in between all my little frilly bits on the edges. Okay, so let me just, let me just take this thread off and I shall just show you very quickly. I've got some really tiny crystals and if you are going to want to do brick stitch onto a bead, Okay, so I pass my thread through, okay, and then I'm going to tie a knot, I do two little knots, okay, pull your thread so that your knot is right near your hole, and then pass your needle through, pull your knot into the middle of the hole, so you've got, you've got thread, I don't know whether you can see this there's a line of thread over my bead and I've also got the tail which enables you to hold on to it then I'm going to bring my needle back through the other side and that's going to create me a thread on the other side as well now using that thread as a bridge so I pass my needle through a bicone and underneath the thread and go back up my bicone so same as we were using the little bridges whoops and you can use again any beads that you want so there's one bead on my put it in there so there's one bead on the side of it and then again, pick up another, did I pick up another one? No. Pick up another bicone, pass your needle under the thread. Pull your thread through and pass your needle back up through to create that loop on the thread. And again, you can keep doing this all the way around. Now, you will get, at one point, you will get to the, um, where your hole is. Okay. When you do, 
pass your needle through the hole so it goes straight the way through and then you just continue from the other side okay so I'm adding my little beads so if I hold that on my you see I can't let me just take my glasses off a minute so I can see whether you can see okay so let's just get this right the way around and you can see how it looks they do look ever so pretty um, so this is the one that's going to go oops this one when I go back down oops a daisy I'm going to go through my hole and then when you go through the hole then you can start on the opposite side and go back round the other way so pick up another one Gosh. Sorry, another side effect, the shakes. <laughs> Everything's been delayed, hasn't it, because of the pandemic and uh, yeah, so is my prescription. I've got until Friday to survive. I'm not sure I'll manage actually. I think Aaron might want to watch his back. I might be stabbing him in the back. Especially because I haven't got my HRT. <laughs> okay. So again, oops, a daisy. I keep getting my tail. It makes it look like a little flower. It's ever so cute. Pass it through the next bead to it to finish off your little bridge and then go straight through the hole which is where it will go through again and you'll have one bead that won't have a little bridge where you went round to the other side so just go back that will be the one next to your hole so go back and just put a little bridge onto that bead and let me just Go through one more and then you have a little beaded bead. I don't know, is it better on there? It's so sparkly, I'm not sure how clear it is. But there's a little pearl in the center and again you can still go back on this it doesn't you can go smaller so you could add little tiny number 11 seed beads around this or even i know we do even smaller uh little bicones you could ag actually add little bicones around this again so and you can use these if you make these up ind individually you can then actually string them all together onto a necklace or tiger tail as inclusions in between beads so you can make it look absolutely spectacular so i hope you've enjoyed that i'm going to just show you again what we did so we did that that lovely sort of pico edge um and your pearls around the ring and what i will do once i finish this video um i'll uh, upload on the comments i'll upload a picture of my of my unfinished bead catcher uh bead catcher dream catcher so you can see it with the smaller beads and then i'll also upload a picture of the one that we've just achieved and also i'll upload you a little picture of the little tiny beaded one as well but it's as simple as that so basically you're just creating a bridge with thread around your bead and then using that bridge instead of your metal ring 
to attach your actual beads onto. So very, very simple stitch, but very, very, very effective. Right, let me turn you up right. Oops, a daisy without burning myself. Okay, has anybody got any questions? <laughs> anybody? Trisha, thank you. No, that's that's my pleasure. I love sharing them with you. Is that good, Donna? Is that okay? I, I'm not sure the pictures were that great, but <laughs> I, I I don't know how to like zoom in or anything, so um, I'm really not that skilled at this sort of thing. So I can never really tell whether the pictures, you know, do them justice or. Hopefully the Zoom will be better because <laughs> we'll be able to show some some still pictures as well and it'll be up close and, and, and what have you. So um, you don't need to cope with my shaky hand. Um, okay, so I don't know what Donna's doing next week. Any clues, anybody? <laughs> okay, so how long have I wasted your time for? Too long. Yeah, it's a great thing to have a go. Thank you. Thank you, Riverside Beads, whoever it is. I guess it's Donna. <laughs> thank you, Donna. Um, yeah, so thank you, everybody. And uh, like I say, I'll upload those pictures in the comments below so you can sort of um, have a look at those pictures. Um, and thank you for joining us. Um, I shall see you again in two weeks. And Donna will see you next Wednesday at 3.30. Don't know what she's doing, but it'll be exciting. Okay, bye guys. Bye Dawn.